Right now, live at 5, just over a week until Election Day, and the campaigning continues in the Northland. We hear from Vice President Mike Pence what he said here at the Range Regional Airport. Pence rally attendees are met with Biden-Harris supporters ahead of the rally. Plus, we'll head to Ely, where the school board is assessing the financial damage COVID-19 has had on the district's budget. And later, the journey for Duluth Long Border has come to an end, but he says his mission to end child hunger is far from over. You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. Welcome to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from City Hall where dozens are gathered demanding more be done to help our region's homeless population, especially as cold temperatures arrive. We'll have more on their message coming up tonight at 10. Good evening, I'm Kristen Vaki. Thanks for joining us. Just eight days out from this election, Vice President Mike Pence was hoping to solidify the Trump campaign's path to another term in the White House, a road that Republicans believe lies partially through the Iron Range. CBS 3's John Cardinelli breaks down Pence's campaign speech in Hibbing this afternoon. Vice President Mike Pence addressed a crowd of a couple hundred people at the Range Regional Airport in Hibbing today. And this is the second time the Vice President had a visit here in the Northland. He first came here in late August. And this follows a weekend in which the Vice President was in the headlines as five of his aides tested positive for COVID-19. And we learned earlier today that the Vice President did not test positive for the virus and he came here today and he had many talking points mainly about the Iron Range and as we know the Republican Party is trying to turn the state of Minnesota red for the first time in decades. He said that himself and the president are trying to bring more jobs here to northern Minnesota. This when Joe Biden was vice president they withdrew the mineral rights for the nation's largest untapped copper and nickel reserves right here in northern Minnesota. But from the beginning, President Donald Trump has been fighting to open up the Iron Range. This president went straight to work, not just to protect mining, to protect the way of life. Pence also touched on the coronavirus, adding more conservative justices to the court and cutting taxes. Coming up tonight at 10, we'll have more coverage on those different topics the vice president talked about here today. All right, thanks, John. Before the rally, Democrats lined the entrance to the Range Regional Airport in Hibbing, making their voices heard, too. CBS 3's Leanne Valdez tells us what folks on both sides had to say. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris supporters brought the heat to Vice President Mike Pence's rally on this cold Monday. I think four more years would put this this country in such a deep hole. But Republican supporters upheld their loyalty to the Trump administration. The Democrats are going to give everything to everybody with our tax money? No, sir. No. Health care for illegals and the whole works? Good luck with that. Democrat supporters arrived to the Range Regional Airport in Hibbing at 11 a.m. Iron Ranger Ed Drews, who calls the president divider in chief, says Trump hasn't treated the pandemic with sincerity. If Donald Trump could convince his group to wear masks, we may save, they say, anywhere from 80 to 100,000 lives by the end of February. Kathy Merkel from Virginia disagrees. We need somebody like him in office. And I support him 100%. Merkel says Trump has done an outstanding job navigating the country through the pandemic. Keeping us all safe, keeping us healthy, um, really taking charge of the COVID. A hot topic on both sides of the aisle, their stance on division and unity. One of the main reasons I'm supporting them is because of the divisiveness that I feel Donald Trump has caused in the country. I don't know if I believe that. I mean, I know we have a divided country, unfortunately, and I know more of the people should listen to actually what the person is doing versus picking the parties. Minnesota's 8th Congressional District, which includes Iron Range, voted for a Republican presidential candidate back in 2016. Along with the vice presidential visit, the Iron Range was the main talking point this morning in Hermantown. Congressman Pete Stauber hosted a roundtable discussion on mining with local energy and resource leaders. The talk included National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien and White House Director of Trade and Manufacturing Dr. Peter Navarro. 
Leaders touched on the importance of mining precious minerals here in the U.S. and becoming less dependent on foreign countries like China. As we go down the list, the long list of critical minerals, we see that a lot of the dependence is on countries that are our strategic adversaries and competitors like China, like Russia. You're blessed here. That's the highest grade nickel in the world. Please note that. When it comes to questions over copper nickel mining and the environment, the administration says it believes we can extract those resources safely in order to keep communities healthy. The miners, the, 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 the oil industry workers, people have kids, they've got families, they, they, they live in those neighborhoods, they live where the refineries are, they, li they live where the manufacturing hubs are. Uh, they want clean energy, they want uh, clean water, uh, they want clean air, and that's what, that's what we're doing here in America. President Trump signed an executive order last month which expected to expand our national mining industry. Following the meeting, we reached out to the Save the Boundary Waters group for their reaction to the roundtable. Executive Director Tom Landwehr told us because Twin Metals is a Chilean mining company, the Trump administration is doing nothing more than selling out the clear, clean air and water of Minnesota for foreign benefits. Now to the national scene. In just a few hours, the GOP-controlled Senate is scheduled to take a final vote confirming Amy Coney Barrett to the U.S. Supreme Court. The move will fill the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's seat and create a 6-2-3 conservative majority on the high court. President Trump tapped Barrett to replace the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg following her death just over a month ago. Vice President Mike Pence was set to preside over the Senate for the final vote, but Democrats urged him to reconsider given the latest coronavirus outbreak at the White House. Well, let's turn to some news closer to home here. Dave, uh -huh. it is feeling like winter out there. Yeah, and tonight it's going to get even colder, Ooh. Kristen. We could be flirting with some record low temperatures, especially wow. among our homeland communities of the Iron Range from Chisholm towards my neck of the woods, Ely, and the rest of us not blazingly warm either. So to set the stage, we take a live look at what's going on near Hibbing and Chisholm, and the sky is gray, and we have snow on the ground. If that doesn't melt this week, this may be one of the earliest starts to winter we've ever had. But if it melts away, then we restart when it comes again, so then we can wipe the slate clean. And we're going to try to keep that snow going here tonight as that sky clears and then we cool on down. So again, it could be single digits north of Duluth, low teens for the rest of the region. And then by Wednesday, it's going to be a little bit warmer, still not back to normal, but warmer than tonight and tomorrow. Tomorrow here in the Twin Ports, we'll start at about 13 and finish near 30. The normal is 47. You know, for the next seven days, I don't think we're going to get towards 47, but a couple days may be close, and we'll point those out coming up in just a few more minutes. All right, we'll bundle up. Thanks, Dave. Still to come on Live at 5, the conclusion to the Cloquet Chicken Trilogy, plus preparing for Halloween in Ashland County. City by City is up next. And tonight at 6, Minnesota's governor says the state is at a critical point in the fight against COVID. How the state's infection rate compares to the rest of the world. You're watching Live at 5 with Kristen Bakke, Anthony Matt, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live Local CBS 3. Season 2 is here. The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. Radical liberals are trying to defund and dismantle police departments across America. And the radical liberal candidate for Congress is Quinn Nystrom. Nystrom and her extreme allies will turn their backs on our police and endanger our communities. Pete Stauber kept us safe for 23 years as a police officer. Now he's fighting to ensure law enforcement has the training and tools they need to keep us safe. Pete Stauber for Congress. I'm Pete Stauber, and I approve this message. I hail from Canada, but I'm not a hockey player. I came here for soccer, but my journey at UWS has turned into much more than just an athletic endeavor. I have a lot to thank the professors for, for allowing me the opportunity to have confidence in myself, whether it's on the field or in the classroom or on the campus, and I think that I really flourished. For me, my experience at UWS has truly allowed me to, to connect with who I am. You know, for such a small campus, I think it offers such a big experience. The name Superior truly fits this institution. 
It is the question that matters the most. ¿Dónde está? That takes you behind the story. Robert. It drives everything we do. It is the foundation of trust. Who did all of this? And the truth that propels us forward. What did you make of that? It is the question. One word, three letters long. And without it, our purpose. That's news. And our freedom fade. This is why. First, the radical left came after Republicans like me. Then the radical left came after police officers like me. Now, they're coming after you. We live in dangerous times. That's why I'll always defend the police and your Second Amendment right to defend your family. Tina Smith has already voted against both. I'm Jason Lewis, and not only do I approve of this message, I guarantee it. Not bad. Let's keep practicing. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Bayfield, Wisconsin. Dave will have your full weather forecast coming up in just a few minutes. But first, let's take a look around the region. Ashland is advising residents on how to stay safe and have fun this Halloween. Plus, the conclusion of the Chicken Trilogy in Cloquet. That and more as we take you around the Northland city by city. things off in Ashland where COVID-19 may be putting a damper on traditional Halloween celebrations, but the city, along with the Department of Health, is still working to show residents a spooky good time. The county has released a list of activities with a COVID-19 risk rating. County officials are recommending families try to stay home and stick with low-risk activities like carving pumpkins, watching scary movies, and holding virtual costume contests. If families do venture out to trick or treat, the county recommends staying within one's own neighborhood and for candy goodie bags to be pre-wrapped and ready to go. Heading now to Ely, where the school board is assessing the financial damage of COVID-19 on the school budget. The board has found at least $425,000 in additional expenses related to COVID-19. With a budget of about $613,000, it might seem like the school board is in the clear. But that budget is dependent on the school receiving more than $200,000 in relief money and a $76,000 grant from St. Louis County. Outgoing, outgoing board member James Pointer says that a decrease in enrollment will have a long-term impact on the school's budget and the board needs to look at the big picture. And finally, we'll head to Cloquet for the conclusion of our chicken trilogy. The Cloquet City Council unanimously voted to approve a new chicken ordinance on Monday. The ordinance allows the raising of chickens within city limits. The vote came about after city residents started a petition calling for the previous ordinance to be revised. The City Planning Commission then set forth a recommendation for the change. The vote is a huge win for chicken owners who say there are numerous benefits to raising chickens, including access to fresh eggs. If there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland city by city. Still to come on Live at 5, why more companies are giving their employees a paid day off for Election Day. Our earlier live look took a look towards the Iron Range. Now let's take a look at Lake Superior near Ashland. And it looks pretty calm now, but the winds are going to be picking up overnight. In fact, there will be a gale warning tonight through tomorrow for folks who live near Lake Superior, both the north and the south shore. Will that affect us inland at all? Well, I'll let you know coming up right after our break. Ready, set, internet. Extreme has the speed and price to get you online fast. Stop waiting and get going for as low as $19.99 a month for a year with speeds from 60 meg up to 1 gig. Powerful in-home Wi-Fi and 99.99% network reliability. Extreme has what you need to stay ahead and stay on track. Hurry and get Extreme Internet for as low as $19.99 a month for one year. Dial 844-EXTREME2. Okay, Mr. Medicare figure-outer, one last question. What's the cost? For many, Part E is free. Cost goes up the more parts you add. But UCARE has Medicare Advantage plans that come with everything you need. Sounds good. And so does your bike. Now. Yeah, thanks to you, she's purring like a kitten on a bed of yarn. Well, that's a new one. Yeah, I just made it up. You can steal it for your bike shop. 
No, I'm good. Season two is here. The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS3. Rebuilding Minnesota in a post-pandemic world will take heart and hard work. I'm Michelle Lee, your DFL candidate for Senate District 11. From Teamsters to teachers to laborers to public service professionals, I've earned endorsements from union and labor organizations representing thousands of our essential workers. Now I'm asking for your personal endorsement on Election Day, your vote. Together, we're Minnesota strong. I'm Michelle Lee, and I approve this message. Wolverine RMAX 1000 now at RJ Sport and Cycle. Duke is a man of few words and many songs. Let freedom ring. Go country. I ain't going down till the sun comes up. It's 102.5. Duke. The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS3. Now, the CBS3 Duluth Weathermax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Well, the sky will be clearing later on tonight. Temperatures will be cooling and the winds will be picking up. So we're looking at the National Weather Service issuing a gale warning for all of Lake Superior. That might kick in a little bit of a wind chill factor here tonight, especially in northern Minnesota. Actual air temperatures are going towards the single digits, factor in the winds, and it could feel below zero. Wasn't it two weeks ago we hit 80 above and we're worrying about below zero? Ah, uh, that's the nature of our Northland weather beast. It's almost unpredictable. I won't say it's unpredictable, otherwise I'm chopped liver, but we'll take our best shot right now at looking at the week ahead, which holds a little bit of a warm-up coming our way, but not quite all the way back to normal. The here and now shows at the airport the current temperature is 26, normal is 47, relative humidity is 51 percent, westerly northwesterly wind right now is only going eight miles per hour, but we could be going towards 25 even inland by tomorrow morning, and that means over the flat surface of the lake even higher, hence the gale warning. Air pressure at the surface is a bit on the higher side at 30.34 inches of mercury, but up aloft we still have the tail end of a low pressure system working through for a few more hours, so there's still a chance for a couple of flurries with that cloudier sky. After midnight, though, we do clear and cool. Current temperatures are in the mid to upper 20s for the Upper Peninsula, and we're looking at 28 to 30 degrees at this hour in northwestern Wisconsin, including a 30 in Superior. East central Minnesota is in the upper 20s. North Shore is running from 25 to 31. And towards the Iron Ranges and Borderland, we're looking at mid to upper 20s there as well. Overnight lows tonight, you know, single digits for the Rangers and for the rest of us about 10 to 13. So it will be brisk, but by Wednesday we start to warm back up again at least a little bit. Like I mentioned, not quite to normal, but close enough, maybe good for a cigar this time around. And coming around right now, we see the clouds associated with that lower pressure system. And there's those on and off spotty snow showers that are peppering the head of the lakes right now. Could see that for a couple more hours until after midnight when higher pressure reaches into our area to clear up the sky and bring us some sunshine. And maybe by Wednesday, it'll start to warm us up just a little bit. One thing this high is going to do is keep these two low pressure systems to the south at bay. And then that means they can't push moisture in to feed this low pressure system that could be coming our way for Wednesday. And Wednesday may be the closest day we come to getting any kind of precip, though I'm thinking we just might get a cloudy sky and miss out on the precip again because this system's going to be moisture starved. And then once we get into Thursday, that low goes away and another shot of high pressure comes to call and we clear up again and then warm up just a little bit more. So we'll show you that progression of temperatures here with our seven day forecast. Tonight in Minnesota though, it's a depression. Low temps anywhere from about six on the range to maybe 20 right by the lake with a partly cloudy sky building in. Wisconsin and Michigan will be a hair warmer going about 10 to 13 degrees as I mentioned. And then for tomorrow with a clear to partly cloudy sky, Wisconsin and Michigan will only hit 31 to 34. That's almost 15 degrees cooler than normal. And Minnesotans say, hey, we can be even cooler than that with highs only in the upper 20s up towards the ranges. So it'll be a pretty day tomorrow, but a brisk one. But after that, we do mellow out a little bit. Wednesday, I'm thinking we'll miss out on the precip, but at least we'll get some clouds, which will help bring us back to 40. Then we'll bobble around there through Friday, and Saturday may be the pick of the litter here this week. Saturday, Halloween, during the daylight hours, sunshine, and a high of 45. And by then, the daytime high should have settled down, and we'll meet in the middle, and we could be back to normal. Hey, you know, I'm not going to complain about those temperatures after last week, our little... 
dose of winter that we received. <laughs> yeah, I spent all of last week doing snow tires every day. Wife's car, son's car, daughter's car. Yep. I left mine on all year, so I didn't have to do mine. You were good to go. Uh -huh. Thanks, Dave. Last month, we brought you the story of Daniel Plies and his longboarding journey down the Mississippi, all to raise money for childhood hunger. We are happy to report that Plies has finished his journey after 2,500 miles in just seven weeks. His goal in September was to raise $5,000 for Project Joy, an organization that addresses the childhood hunger crisis in the Twin Ports. His GoFundMe has now surpassed $21,000. Fly says people's kindness and generosity kept him going when times got hard. Thank you from, from the absolute bottom of my heart. Like the, the, the words of encouragement and support went a long way on a lot of the, the really hard days and even the good days. Plies is set to head back to Duluth in a couple of days, this time on a plane. If you would like to learn more about Project Joy or how you can donate, a link is on our website, cbs3duluth.com. For those who work on Election Day, waiting all day in line to vote just isn't an option. But more and more businesses are taking the bold step of giving employees paid time off to cast their ballots. Michael George has the story. Across America, we've seen it. People waiting hours and hours to cast ballots during early voting. Those lines often mean a difficult choice for many who work on Election Day. Vote or collect a paycheck. But that's starting to change. Our democracy does better when we all participate. Corley Kenna is really spokesperson important. for clothing company Patagonia. It's one of a growing number of businesses making it easier for employees to vote. On election day, they'll shut down their stores, their headquarters, and their distribution center. Workers will get a paid day off so they can vote, and four more days off if they volunteer as a poll worker. As we face a climate crisis, a social justice crisis, a health crisis, and an economic crisis, I think it is more important than ever before that we engage and that we exercise our right to vote. Other companies like GM and Square have their own initiatives. But it's not just large businesses. A survey by Square found about two-thirds of small businesses say they plan to give workers time off to vote this year. Chocolate shop Chocolatel in Atlanta has only a dozen employees, but on election day, they'll all have a paid day off. If you believe everyone should have the right to vote, then you know you need to step up and, and do something about it. Co-owner Matt Wyant says closing the store for a day is just common sense. It should be a national holiday where everyone has the day off. And I think, you know, the community of business owners that we talk with all, all felt strongly the same way. Sending the message to customers and employees that voting is essential. Square's survey found a quarter of businesses are open to making Election Day a company-wide holiday to encourage more employees to vote. Still to come, how COVID-19 is impacting rural communities in Minnesota. First, the radical left came after Republicans like me. Then the radical left came after police officers like me. Now, they're coming after you. We live in dangerous times. That's why I'll always defend the police and your Second Amendment right to defend your family. Tina Smith has already voted against both. I'm Jason Lewis, and not only do I approve of this message, I guarantee it. Not bad. Let's keep practicing. Spiny water fleas are an invasive species that threatens Minnesota lakes. Recent research from the University of Minnesota has shown that lakes with spiny water fleas have fewer and smaller walleye than uninvaded lakes. You can help prevent the spread of spiny water flea by draining all water and wiping down your equipment when you leave the lake. This especially includes fishing lines and reels, live wells, and bait buckets. Learn more at StopSpiny.org. Hello, I'm Steve Little with Bath Planet. For the month of October, we are offering free installation for bathtubs, showers, safety tubs, and surrounds. Get your dream bathroom with free installation. As always, you can still get one of our great financing options for low monthly payments or zero down, zero interest, and zero payments until 2022. This offer ends October 31st, so call us today or go online to book your appointment to take advantage of this amazing offer. Bath Planet, out of this world service, down to earth price. It's coming. You ready? 
because Toro's Snow Days sale is here. With the number one brand in snowblowers, you will dominate winter. And now during Toro Snow Days, get up to $100 off select two-stage snowblowers, up to $40 off select 60-volt battery snowblowers, and up to $50 off select single-stage snowblowers, plus great financing offers. Win winter with Toro. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's check in with meteorologist Caitlin Moffitt this morning. And the below average trend Thanks does so much for joining us. So wake up with us starting at 5 a.m. Watch Caitlin and Jenna in the morning at 5 and 6 a.m. on CBS3. I'm Quinn Nystrom, and I pay $600 a month for two vials of insulin, and that's with insurance. Meanwhile, drug company profits go up and up. It's why I refuse to take their money for my campaign. But Pete Stauber has taken tens of thousands of dollars from corporate interests and voted five times against lowering the cost of prescription drugs. I approve this message because I know we literally can't afford Pete Stauber in Congress. Skilled trade workers are the backbone of every community and also the Army National Guard. Soldiers get paid training to keep the power flowing, engines running, and supplies moving. Army National Guard soldiers are learning skills that can set them up for success with companies looking to hire the best. The Army National Guard basically do my resume for me. Find out how you can learn a trade and serve part-time for your community and country by visiting NationalGuard.com. The Kelly Clarkson Show, right here. Weekdays at 3 on CBS3. Are neighboring states part of rural Minnesota's virus growth? That question is concerning health officials in the Midwest. Statistics from Minnesota Health show the 10 counties with the fastest case growth are all in rural areas, many of which border surrounding states. Officials report the rate of new cases per capita across 56 counties in greater Minnesota tripled between early September and early October. Some health experts suggest rural Minnesota residents are influenced by neighboring states where public health responses, such as mask mandates, have not been as aggressive. Meanwhile, contact tracers in Wisconsin have become overrun, making containing the virus difficult. Wisconsin saw an average of 3,400 daily cases reported in the last week. An additional 3,600 positive tests were confirmed in Sunday's update. The total number of cases is approaching 200,000. Some Wisconsin counties are no longer able to reach out to an infected person's contacts, so they're instead asking infected people to do that work themselves. Coming up on the CBS Evening News. From CBS News election headquarters here in New York, President Trump and Joe Biden in the Keystone State making their final pitch to voters in the swing state of Pennsylvania today. Plus more from our 60 Minutes interview with Senator Kamala Harris on the very night that Amy Coney Barrett is expected to be confirmed as the next Supreme Court Justice. And with skyrocketing coronavirus cases in 44 states around the country, why one state may ration ICU beds for sick patients. That's all tonight here on the CBS Evening News. CBS 3 closed captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health. Need a flu shot? Find flu booth dates and locations at EssentiaHealth.org. It isn't always easy living in the Northland. Up here, we have to count on our neighbors and let them know they can always count on us. I have the honor of serving our community in the State Assembly. Down there, I'm fighting to make health care more affordable and broadband more accessible. My opponent has other ideas. He wants to help companies like Foxconn give tax cuts and bailouts to billionaires, leaving us behind. I'm Beth Myers, and you can always count on me. We've been down this road long enough, but Tom Tiffany wants to keep us going in the wrong direction. Even during a pandemic, Tiffany supports taking away protections for pre-existing conditions, kicking millions off their health insurance, and forcing you to pay more. There's another way. Trisha Zunker. Zunker will put our families first with better health care and help for small businesses, workers, and farmers to get our economy moving again. Trisha Zunker for Congress. I'm Trisha Zunker, and I approve this message. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. Coming up on CBS3, Rice Lake leaders could put an end to plans for a controversial project. The details at 6. Well, the sky's cloudy right now, but should clear up overnight, and that's going to lead to a cool down. I'll talk about how low those temps go at 6.
We've been through a lot this year, and it all feels so personal. Your health and your family's well-being, the businesses you built, your kids' education. So many of you have told me that you want us to move forward, get this virus under control, rebuild American manufacturing, support innovation and small businesses, make America work for all of us. I'm Tina Smith, and I approve this message because we get it done when we work together. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Canal Park on this Monday evening. Let's take a quick look at some of today's top stories and a peek at what's coming up tonight at 6. Just eight days out from the election, Vice President Mike Pence was hoping to solidify the Trump campaign's path to another term in the White House. Vice President Pence addressed a crowd of a couple hundred people at the Range Regional Airport in Hibbing today. As we know, the Trump campaign has been focusing on northern Minnesota to try and turn Minnesota red for the first time in decades. Meanwhile, Congressman P. Stauber hosted a roundtable discussion on mining with local energy and resource leaders. The talk included National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien and White House Director of Trade and Manufacturing Dr. Pete Navarro. Leaders touched on the importance of mining precious metals, uh, minerals rather, here in the U.S. and becoming less dependent on foreign countries like China. And tonight at 6, Minnesota's Governor says the state is at a critical point in the fight against COVID-19. Governor Tim Wall says the next 6 to 12 weeks will be key as cases surge around the upper Midwest. Coming up, how the infection rate across Minnesota compares to the rest of the world. That's your news at 5. The CBS Evening News is up next. We'll see you right back here at 6.